Greetings, pre-calculus students. This is a video, it's a resource video for basic graphing calculator usage. Now you all have either this calculator, a Texas Instruments TI-83 Plus, or a Texas Instruments TI-84 Plus, as per the syllabus and class policies guidelines. Anything else, and I won't be able to teach you how to use it, I don't have time. So it would be better if you just had one of those two calculators. They are actually pretty much the same. So, if I teach you everything on a TI-83+, Plus, you can transfer it directly over to a TI-84+, Plus calculator. It's been the standard for many years now, and it's proven to be a great platform for the SAT and ACT tests. So, this information that I teach you today will be useful well beyond this course for you. I use this calculator all throughout college in both my astrophysics major and my music major, matter of fact, for five years. So, basics of the TI-83 and 84 plus calculators. Turning on is simple, press this button here, and you see that little indicator that it's on, it blinks. You've got your number pad, you've got your basic operations, you have your exponent, which looks like a carrot, and you have many other functions. Oh my goodness. We've got arrows, we've got things up here. I'm only going to go over the basics today because I don't want to overwhelm you. And the first thing I want to go over is just basic computation. So let's say we have, I want to do 7 plus 5. You press 7 plus 5 and then enter. That's the new equals button. And you should get 12, as you should. If you don't want to see that on the screen anymore, you can keep doing things such as 8 plus 83 minus 6 plus 12, and it will do the correct order of operations. So it can mix in a multiplication, and it'll put them all together on the same screen. If you don't like seeing all this stuff, feel free to erase the screen by pressing the clear button. And don't mind this, I actually smashed my finger while I was loading, um, taking off race wheels on my drag car. So it's not a new goth thing I got going on, I'm part of one nail. It's an injury. Okay, so hopefully, I'm trying to get this so you can see it very well. That was basic order of operations, the clear button clears everything from the screen that you don't want to see. Now, let's say we want a graph, which is, you know, this is a graphing calculator, so that's the first major new thing you've seen. We're going to press this button up here. It's called Y equals. And we see this. Don't worry about plot 1, plot 2, or plot 3. That's for stats. And later on in this course, we might use that a little bit. But we're looking at this, looking at this we can graph a lot of different lines. As long as we have Y solved for, and we've seen this before, slope, intercept, form, Y is solved for. And as long as Y is solved for, the, the dependent variable, in other words, we can graph. Now, let's say I wanted to graph y equals 3x plus 4. So, I would say 3. Now, this button right here, this x comma t comma theta comma n, that is your independent variable. And it will always show up as an x. x. Now, what did I say? Plus 4? No problem there. I've loaded it in. And now, in order to see the graph, I press graph. You see the Cartesian coordinates, and then you see the line being populated on the screen as the program runs through in order to graph this thing. I can graph more than one line at a time. Go back to y, plus, y equals button, and in another spot, it doesn't matter which one, you can go down the list as far as you wanted if you felt so inclined. I'll go y1. Let's graph a parabola. How about x squared minus 7? Now in order to graph, to get the squared function, I press x, and then I press this button here. It says x squared minus 7. And then I press the graph button, and it'll populate my graph with that new graph. And everything works really well. You can also change how you want the lines to look. You go all the way over here and you see that moving? I can switch that by pressing enter. Instead of a solid line I can have it be a 
super thick line. I can have it be a shaded area. I can have it be shaded underneath. I can have it be dotted. Or I can have it be full dots that are open. Or I can have it be dashed. Let's do dash. Now I press graph again and it does that parabola dashed. You can barely see it but it's dots. They're evenly spaced on the x-axis. So that's the basics of graphing. Now back to some more buttons. You see all these yellow symbols on top of the buttons. Almost every single button has yellow. In order to access those, well first let me show you how to get out of graphing. You press second and then the mode button. And here we go. Second, what that does is it activates the buttons in a different way. And every time you press a button, the yellow feature above the button is what will happen. So right now I'm going to press second, mode, and quit is going to happen. And so now I'm back to home base. So let's try some more. What, let's say I wanted to do a square root, like square root of 16. Well, I would have to find the square root feature. And it's actually the second above x squared button. So I press second, then x squared, and you see there a square root symbol shows up with a parenthesis. 16 is then inputted, and then you close that parenthesis just to be extra safe. It will work without the parenthesis closed, but if you have an order of operations deal where you've got a lot of things going on, and you don't want stuff in your square root, you need to close that. Press enter, and you can see I get 4. A few other interesting things is the alpha button. You press clear to get rid of all this. If you press the alpha button, you're going to see that it activates all the green letters at the top right of each button. And those are mostly just letters. And we're going to use a few of these, such as the uh, looks like quotation mark sign near the plus later on. But right now, Alpha is just a bunch of letters, and you can actually store data using this button as one of those letters. And then when you use that letter again, that stored information is equated to that letter. But we don't really need to get into that for this course. Here's something I want you to make sure you know how to do. The cube and cube root. To access these, you go to math and then you see a bunch of different types of functions and uh, callings and let's go down to three what this is is the cube button if you want to cube something get out of here let's go second mode quit let's write what we want to cube first eight then press math then press three or scroll down until you have it highlighted and then press enter this is going to cube 8 for me if I press enter now. You get what we should, 5, 12. Now let's say I wanted to cube root 8. Well, I can do that. First I press math, and I go down to 4, which is the cube root of. Now I'll put 8 inside there, and press enter. And I get what I should, 2. Let's say I wanted to do the sixth root of something. Okay? Let's say the sixth root of 16. Well, I don't see fourth root, fifth root, sixth root. I just see a bunch of crazy stuff. I don't even know what it means. Five is the way we do any power root. So, we go back. We put in our number first. Let's say we want to cube the sixth root of 216. So what we have to do is we have to put a six first for that nth root, then we press math and press 5. What this does is that x reads that 6 before it and says, oh, it wants that degree of root. Now, no parentheses come with this form, so you don't need them, but I always use them just to be safe. The sixth root of 216 is irrational, but this is how it's computed on this calculator. Since I'm doing all these square roots and nth roots, why don't I do powers. No problem. Let's say I wanted 9 to the 6th power. Okay, well I don't have that in math. Where I do have that is this caret right here. That caret is an exponent. It will 
Treat the following numbers as exponents of the previous numbers. So 9 caret 6 gives me 9 to the 6 in the calculator, and it will calculate that for me. 531,441. There's the basics. And then one more thing I want to teach you is window. If you don't like, let's go back to our graphs, if you don't like what you see on the window, and you want to, see, you want to zoom in or zoom out or have a different window, that's no problem. Just go to the window button. What this is showing me is the left and right bound and the top and bottom bound on the X and Y axes. So I have 15 tick marks on either side of the origin in the x directions and 10 tick marks on either side of the origin in the y directions. Let's say I wanted to zoom in. Let's make it go from negative 5 to 5 on the x and negative 4 to 4 on the y. Now why in the standard position were they different? Why wasn't it negative 15 to 15 on both the x and the y? Well, if you look at the screen the screen itself is not a square, it's a rectangle. So they do that so that none of the axes are stretched. Now, since we've changed the windows, all we need to do is press graph and we get our graphs back. But now it's zoomed in with it centered on the origin. There's actually an easier way to zoom by pressing the zoom button. And you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can zoom in at a certain decimal, you can zoom standard, which sets it back to negative 15, 15, and negative 10, 10, like we saw it. You can zoom as a trig, and trigonometry, which we'll get into in a later chapter, we'll, we'll need to zoom trig all the time so our tick marks line up where they should be, where it's useful. But for now, I don't want to change anything, so I go second mode to quit. Brings me back to the front page. So for now, I'm going to leave that. You know how to graph. You know how to compute, you know how to use square roots and nth roots, you know how to use powers, and you know how to use the basic operations. And that's good for a basic tutorial on the TI-83 and 84+. Plus. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me your specifics, or we can talk in class, and I can show you on your calculator. Thank you very much, and I'll see you later.